start the recording. I think you guys can see my slides, correct? I think it's only one slide at the end. Yeah. Um, but all right. Yeah. So welcome. Welcome to episode 52. No, is it 52? No, this is more like 72. Sorry. My Roman numbers are a little bit off. So, right. Is it LXX2? Can someone confirm? Is it 52, 72? 72, right? <laughs> See your face better, but I don't know. I, I was not prepared for this. Let me search really quick. <laughs> 72. 72. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. So welcome to Coffee Break number 72. Hope you grab your mug. I got my mug here. It is filled with coffee. Um, so yeah, so as you know, this is a space for you guys to come and join us, uh, ask your questions, load your code, hear some of the new stuff that we're working on, and kind of like what's upcoming from our side. Um, so before I move into questions and so on, I want to do just a quick announcement. As you know, we're actually starting registration for Autodesk.com 2023. So right now, this registration, it is going to be for the San Francisco um, like of it. Uh, we are going to have one in Europe also around the same time, like somewhere around in September. Uh, that should be coming soon when it comes to the announcement. But yeah, we're going back into this kind of like developer conference mode. So not not salesy pitches, more like hardcore, like coding, uh, demos about stuff that we're working on with the new services and so on. Uh, those of them include the AC, uh, AAC one, including Forma, Fusion, uh, access to data itself. Um, so yeah. So we're, we are open for registration. So if you are in the America's time zone or you want to take a nice break in September to go to San Francisco, they have amazing food, by the way, um, I will recommend it. Yeah, come and join us. The team is going to be there. Uh, we're going to be sharing a lot of knowledge with you guys Um previous a couple of months previous to AU and so on. So definitely something to consider. Okay. Um, now with that, I want to give the floor to you guys. Like what's going on? Uh, do we have any questions, anything that we want to share? And I'm going to go once, twice, three times. Oh, Mr. Tyler. Hey, Jaime, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? Doing good. I've got a question. We're getting ready to launch on production, the just a viewer and testing that out. What we're running into is that it's getting blocked by the content security policy. So because we don't have it allowing um, the worker-source blob available, so I was curious if we throw that in there, what's what's the standard um, content security policy for having some of these? I've seen some websites that have this on there and they don't have that. So I just was curious from your guys' perspective, what what's the security implications? I'll be talking to like our developers and uh, architects later about that, but. Hmm. I think <clears throat> I think you should be fine uh, allowing these uh, uh, web worker blobs as long as they're coming from the same page, basically, right? They're they're being created by the viewer. This is something that is um, common, right? I mean, the viewer is using uh, web workers for different types of um, tasks for to run in the background, right? So, loading an SVF, processing the property database. Uh, data structure things like that this is done in web workers <clears throat> so i think in the uh in the csp is that acronym did i get it right yeah uh, should be possible to basically specify that you do allow blobs 
or things like web workers coming from the the same origin, right? Basically, you could you could limit that, and I think that should be fine. So it's those are coming from the developer the API, one. the Autodesk developer API. Uh yes, yes. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, actually, um, I need to check with the viewer team. I think because I think the web worker code is actually part of the viewer 3d.js file already but um i don't remember how exactly that works there but i think it's being loaded as a blob for some reason okay but yeah it's part of the viewer functionality so i do see the link that you share in there and then open up the console it just seems like it's that it's refusing to create a worker Let me see. Check. <clears throat> From blob. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah, I'm um, safe in line. Okay. Yeah, so um I don't really again I need to check with the viewer team. <clears throat> I'm not sure if that is coming from uh but you can actually see that in the console, right? When you open that link, right. that's the, right. the create worker that's from the viewer 3d.js file. Um, and I believe it's actually creating a worker from a code that's already part of this JavaScript file. Okay. So limiting, uh, using the, you know, adding a content security policy for the worker SRC to limit this, this to either to developer API orders.com or to just the uh, self. I think that should be sufficient and still keeping it you know safe so that no other workers can be executed from other from other origins. Okay. Yeah, I'll test the the self in the the developer API. I know if I allowed it generally for the worker source blob, then on my local machine, then it works. Okay. Even with the same content security policy, but adding that. So I just wanted to see if there was a best practice going mm -hmm. across the board. Yeah. Well, I think I would try and keep it. Keep the scope, uh, you know, narrow, right? So see if we could limit that just to the developer API domain or even just self. I think that would be that would be the best. Okay, sounds good. I'll try that. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Sure. Hey, Tyler. Oh, Augusto's here. Hi, Augusto. Hello. Good morning. Morning. Um, so I'm giving people option to do questions and so on, but I don't know if you had some something else for the agenda. Uh, no, I mean it, as usual, right? This is very very open. So yeah, yeah. yeah questions or topics from I, team. I did announce about the DevCon 2023 registration being open. Oh, that's that's good. Yeah, and I see Alex has a question. Yeah, basically I have a teeny bug report for you. <laughs> I can share, I can show you. So I'm sharing my screen. Uh, Autodesk non photorealistic rendering extension. Uh, uh, I'm loading extensions, setting parameters, and uh, it's okay, it's set as I want, but processing style and other parameters are not affected here. <laughs> At least at the uh, 7.87 version, I saw uh, probably today 7.88 released. I haven't tested it in it yet. <laughs> but uh, sorry, sorry, Alex, go ahead. Um, just <laughs> that's uh, that's it about <laughs> this. Okay, so the, the panel. I don't think it's exposed in the UI, is it? Uh, it's exposed basically here oh, from configuration so settings. Yeah. Okay. I remember it was used just for debugging purposes, but if it's exposed, then yeah, we need to we need to get that sorted out. Um, yeah. So I'll bring that to the, I'll bring that to your team. Mm -hmm. Thank Great. you. <laughs> can can um, you can you send us a like just do kind of like a capture screen of this and then just send one to the APS help? Um, and that way we can we can track it there. 
Okay, sure. I should probably stop. <clears throat> Thank you. Just simple code. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, one another thing I, I wanted to ask Peter, basically. <laughs> Uh, some kind of request or blog post about uh, cleaning up uh, viewer resources. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, basically I found, uh, uh, for example, if I uh, add uh, three uh, dot group to viewer layers, uh, add overlay, it won't uh, dispose it correctly, it would stay in memory. So would be super good if uh, <laughs> this topic would be covered. I mean, uh, this layers, uh, scene builder, probably data visualization stuff, materials, you know, uh, everything just to <laughs> have some somewhere. Okay, so provide some details about <clears throat> proper cleanup of resources. And yes. we're talking about uh, things like the 3JS meshes and uh, materials, custom meshes and materials being added to the scene, things like that. Yeah, yeah. So like that uh, viewer overlays and uh, scene builder. And you, you think that when a mesh is added to the overlay that it's not being disposed properly? Uh, they are disposed properly if they are added as meshes. If they are added uh, in groups, they will, They are not. Uh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's same, worth, worth the block. So so. Same thing for scene builder. Uh, should we dispose mm -hmm. geometry, materials, you know, everything? Would be super yeah. nice to have something okay. like that. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Let me let me add that down as a as a task for our team. I think that would be worth. That's a topic worth a, a blog post at least for sure. Thanks. All right. Do we have any other questions? You guys didn't have your coffee today, didn't you? <laughs> uh, I, 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 I had one. So. Somebody <laughs> but I, 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 was, I, was, I, I got st stuck in traffic for yeah. 10 minutes. Andres, not... you got a question? Yes, can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll try to make it as quick as I possibly can. A few of them are questions that might be a little bit generic or maybe perhaps newbie questions. But okay. I recently started. I started trying to develop a, a few extensions for the viewer. Um, I was able to access the instance tree and all of the properties and work with three D models. But I'm currently having issues to access some of the properties that the property extension can read from two D models, like uh, sheets or blueprints, stuff like that. I was wondering where exactly can I go into the API to access those properties. So uh, to, just to make sure I understand, so there are some properties, we're talking about 2D, 2D drawings, and there are some properties that you do see in the property dialog in the UI, but you don't see them when you try and query the properties programmatically? Yes, basically because I don't think they have an instance tree. Like when you, the way I access the property of the 3D models is through the instance tree object, but on the sheets and on the blueprints, apparently that same endpoint cannot be accessed because it doesn't exist for that kind of um, oh, model. I see. What you mean. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. So for 2D, I don't think we have any instance tree. Uh, for 2D, we have things like layers. Um, and I think you should be able to find all of that in the model's metadata. So I don't know if you've worked with that, but just like you can do things like in a model that get instance tree, yes, or three D, um, in the same way you should be able to do something like you know model dot get data, and that'll return some general metadata information about that particular model. And I think that includes things like layers as well. Um, and basically, what you need to do when you don't have an instance tree 
uh, you'll just need to work with the fragment list directly, right? So the fragment list is just a flat list of elements representing the individual geometries in your design, whether it's 2D or 3D. And then in case of 3D, you also have the instance tree defining the logical hierarchy on top of that flat list. In 2D, you're just dealing with the flat list directly. So it could be um, um, working with that basically. And uh, there is also a way to map the fragment IDs from the individual fragments to DB IDs. So then you can then again use the standard methods to retrieve properties of a specific object ID or DB ID. Got it. So essentially, I have to like take it back a step. Instead of but, trying to work it's... through the instance tree, just going <laughs> to the manifest itself and querying that. Yeah. Okay. Basically. Perfect. Uh, I think that solves that. I have a couple of other questions. I'll try to be as quick as possible so I don't rob all of you guys' time. Um, so basically, um, I've seen a few like prepackaged classes within the extension SDK, like for example, the search box that is used on the model structure that when you look for a certain property or a certain name or whatever, it gives you suggestions and it like it's, it has a lot of useful code and functionalities that I would like to implement into some of my extensions. I was wondering if it's, that is an option, if it's, uh, or how could I implement that in that case? Right, so talking, we're talking about reusing, in this case, let's say the search box UI class that's already used in other UI elements in the viewer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if this is documented in the documentation. I know that some of the LM, some of the classes um, that we use, some of the UI classes that we use in the official viewer UI uh, are not exposed in the documentation. Um, and sometimes I know that sometimes what I do is I basically cover this <clears throat> in form of a blog post. So some time back I I took, let's say the tree view class that's also part of the you know Autodesk viewing UI namespace. And I wrote a blog post about how that tree view can be used to uh how, how it can be reused if you want to display some sort of an uh interactive collapsible tree of your own data in the viewer UI. And I think here we'll probably need to do the same thing. Uh basically take the search box uh and document it in form of a blog post to say here's how you can reuse it if you want to. All right, perfect. Thank you. I think that solves that. And then basically just to close it out. Um I was looking on the I was looking through the lightning talks and I found one regarding point cloud models. And I believe it worked fine up up until version six of the viewer, but I think at least this demo, the one that I wait no, that's the wrong link. Never mind. Uh, the demo yeah, is actually there, I think that demo no longer works. Right. Yeah, I, I believe there was um, so sometime between in the transition from version viewer version six to seven, we moved to WebGL two by default. Got it. And I believe that actually affected some of the some of our samples where we were using our own custom shaders, um, and I believe that was the case for the point clouds as well. And we were able to, well, I mean, we were able to get those demos working again by basically disabling WebGL two and going back to standard, you know, WebGL one uh, standard that was used before that version change. Um, so I think there would be two options: either if you want to use the the point cloud from those samples, um, you probably need to either revert back to WebGL one. Mm -hmm. There's a way to configure the viewer to keep WebGL one by default, or modify some of the shaders used um, in that point cloud render so that they uh, follow WebGL two requirements. All righty. Basically, what we have been trying to do here in my uh, department is to either implement uh, the Poetry extension or the Poetry software into the viewer. Or mm -hmm. if that's not an option for whatever reason, there's incompatibilities there. Just try to implement uh, 3JS. We're kind of in the midst of getting that working properly, but any help on that 
manner would be greatly appreciated. Okay, yeah. Um, let me check the blog post because I remember that I included this comment in one of those, <clears throat> in one of the blog posts where I was mentioning the way to revert back to WebGL version one. And I believe that would be the, the easiest um, solution in this case. So let me see All if right. I can find that for you. Perfect. And then just a quick um, consult kind of. Um, I was wondering if there is a possibility, like a native possibility of uploading uh, point cloud models directly into the viewer without using the recap API, or is that currently the only Autodesk solution? Um, sorry about that. Uh, I was looking for the for the solution and I saw Augusto has already found it. He's sharing yeah. on screen. Could you please repeat that question? Sorry about that. Uh, is it currently any way of natively uploading point cloud models into the um, Autodesk viewer without using the recap API? Was that currently the only option that we have? Uh, yeah, like uh, <clears throat> the currently the the only official way is through recap. Mm -hmm. um, poultry use case is something that we've been trying to research and document as well, right? So that's what we have the demo about where we backported the poultry loader for our version of 3JS so that you can actually load you know, your own models, usual models into the viewer and then bring in poultry point clouds as well. I would consider that as you know, a, a semi-official approach as well. I mean, I know some of our customers use the po poultry uh, approach. All right, perfect. I think that's that. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, thank you. And I know, uh, so have you noticed, have you seen the <clears throat> the code snippet that Augusto found on our blog while we were talking? Let me see, uh, are they in the chat or? Uh, let me share again, but I'm I'm put on the chat window. I see that's Alexander has also shared a link um, yeah. in the chat. Yeah. So that's basically, yeah, this is the way to um, yeah, ask, just... you, ask the viewer to, um, you know, stay with WebGL1. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Let me save that so I don't lose it. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm I'm going to share the recording later, and uh, when I when I share the recording uh, on YouTube, on the description, I share the links we have on the chat window. Mm, yeah. Okay. They they all be there. Great. When will this be published? Uh, soon after here, like hour or so. All right. Cool. All right. Um, so for the last five minutes, I do have something else that I didn't want to push too long for for the end. Uh, but I guess we're getting closer to the end, so might as well just just do this right now. Okay, so two things first. Um, upcoming events: we have the London Accelerator, June fifth to the ninth, with a focus on construction. Uh, we do have a few spots available still, so if you are around the area or want to come and enjoy uh, the new reign of the king so definitely come and join us to to the london side uh, and then june 30 26 to the 30th uh, we're actually transitioning to doing this one on a virtual mode uh, we want to have an opportunity for having like most of you in different locations that cannot travel to the to the place where we're going to have uh, the events itself to also not feel left out so we're, we're moving this one into a virtual mode. And one of the benefits of having the virtual mode, as you know, is like it's a 24 by five support since we have a team around the world. So I will say registration is open. Definitely start uh, registering in order to save the spot for the for that week. Uh, and then the other thing also is that, I don't know if you noticed, but there is a new functionality that is available within the platform. And that functionality, actually, it's um, the option to add collaborators. So I have two accounts right now. Uh, this one is my incognito mode with a testing account that I tend to use. As you can see, most of them says test something. Um, and then just uh, briefly, and then also just to kind of like grab some, some information from you guys in regards to feedback and so on, we do have this new way of adding collaborators to the apps. 
Uh, we did realize at some point that, for example, whenever an owner of the app, uh, it's only one person, and then this person decides to either switch teams or move to a different company, all that stuff. Most of the times you were having issues with uh, that app actually staying there. So, and then at the same time, also it's it is focused into the part of you might have a big um, developer team. So sharing this kind of like uh, option to have a collaborator on each one of the application kind of gives you that option. So you can start adding collaborators. Uh, you have two different modes, which is the viewer and also the editor uh, for, the, for the options of the apps. So for example, if I end up adding someone like my other account, um uh, just gmail.com and i'm gonna add it as a viewer so now basically it sends that invite to it uh then i'm gonna basically you get something like this right so i got added as a collaboration i do accept the invite so now i go into here and now i am part of that test aws payment that i have where you see myself as a viewer itself uh, already with the owner of the other account uh, being available in there. So if we go back to, into the applications, so these are my applications where I can also add collaborators. And then also there is some applications here that are actually shared with me that I can take part on it and then use those, uh, those as a um, working prototype itself for the, for the collaboration with the team itself, okay? So we'll be writing more information about this. A blog post is coming up. Um, actually, I'm going to add it as a task on me, and that way and, I don't forget about it. Yeah. And I'm just curious if uh, you know, who, who here will find this interesting. Um, have you faced this challenge? Any perspectives? It will be interesting to hear. Like, like you have your account for your company. You have different people working on it, and you want to share credit, share, share the the, to the tokens that you have or you want to share the applications have you experimented this kind of situation before or maybe not Luis has nice yeah. maybe please you can tell us what's nice about it <laughs> we kind of know what it is but from your perspective I guess uh hello hello everyone uh yeah, I never need something like that, but uh, it's great if I can share my my project and my uh, collaborator can change what he needs in inside that application. That's that's cool. That's great actually. So I don't need to send my e email and so on. Yeah, and password. Yes, it's it's mainly because like client secrets and all that stuff, they're not very recommended to be shared on an email or anything like that. So easier now to just add the collaborator to the app and that way you guys can work together on it. Okay, all right. So with that, I'm going to wrap up the coffee break. We're over a minute now. So let me... So next coffee break is May 31st. I did change my name here, but also Augusto Goncalves is the other one. Uh, I did change it because I didn't know if Augusto was going to make it on time to the, to the coffee break. But yeah. with that, I want to say thank you to everybody. And unless you have something else to add, Augusto. Uh, no, thank you, Jaime. All right. See you guys soon. See you in two weeks. Thank, thank you, guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. Yeah.